Welcome to PS 6.4, percents and double number lines. So our objective today is I can use double number line diagrams to solve different problems like what is 40% of 60 or 60 is 40% of what number? So we're gonna start with a warm up. Percents are really fun because they're really applicable to what we use in our everyday life, like as shoppers, going to the store and things like that. So we're going to start with our warm up. Make sure you put your name on your paper and we will go through the problem. So this is, says each of three friends, Lynn, Jada and Andre had the goal of raising $40. So we have three friends raising $40. How much money did each person raise? So for one person, how much did they raise if three people were raising $40? Um, Lynn raised 100% of her goal. Jada raised 50% of her goal. Andre raised 150% of his goal. So they had the goal, each of them, of raising $40. So we could think of this as a table. And we have, if I'm talking about Lynn, and I have money, and I have percent, we know their goal to raise $40 would be 100% of their goal, okay? So if Lynn raised 100% of their goal of $40, then that means she, she raised $40 because, oops, $40. Because that is all of the goal of that, what they're trying to raise. Next, it says, ooh, let me think of raise. Okay, Jada raised 50% of her goal. So under the percent, I'm gonna put 50 to see what Jada earned, okay? I know 100 divided by two is 50, so that means I divide the money by two, okay? So the money divided by two is 20. 40 divided by two is $20, half of the money. So she raised $20, so that means she still needs to earn $20 more to reach her goal, but she's halfway there, okay? Then the last one says Andre. Andre raised 150% of his goal. So he reached his goal plus some more. So we know 100% plus 50% would equal 150%. So I'm gonna just add Lynn and Jada's money. So he earned $40 for 100% plus $20. So I'm gonna say 40 plus 20, which is $60. So he earned more than what he needed to, so he could use his money to help Jada out or use whichever one he needs. Okay, so write that down. Make sure you're following along, you understand. Slow it down if you need to. Okay, erase. Moving on to activity number one. Okay. So a percent is a rate. A percent is a rate in which the first number is compared to 100. So just as a reminder, 70 out of 100 equals 70%. 85 out of 100 equals 85%. 40 out of 100 equals 40%. So a percent is a rate or a ratio, okay, that we can think about. So puppies grow up. Oh, look how cute. So we got some puppies. If you read the instructions on activity one, it says Jada has a new puppy that weighs nine pounds. The vet says that the puppy is now at about 20% of its adult weight. So right now it's nine pounds, and that nine pounds is 20% of its adult weight, of its 100% full weight that it should be once it's grown up. What will the adult weight of the puppy be? So we know 20% is nine, so we could use our double number line to count by 20%. I would go 20%, then 40%, then 60%, then 80%, and then 100% is going to be the full adult weight. This is going to be its adult weight at 100%. Um, so I'm going to use whatever ratio I find up there to find out how much it would weigh when it's the full weight. So I'm going to count by nines. Um, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. 
So 100% of its adult weight would be 45 pounds. What will the adult weight of the puppy be? I'm going to write 45 pounds. Let's say a, a big, big dog. Once it's an adult. But right now it's only 9 pounds. Okay. Another way we could do it, an additional way that isn't on here but is a good way to remember, is to do a table. So if I did a table and I had um, weight and I had percent, I can put in my first ratio. 9 pounds is 20%. And I'm trying to get to 100%. So I know 20 times 5 is 100. So then I would multiply 9 times 5. And 9 times 5 is 45. So again, that gives me the same pound. pound. So I'm going to say that must be the right answer. Because I did it two ways and I get the same answer. Okay, question two. Question two says, Andre has a puppy that weighs 9 pounds as well. The vet says that this puppy is now at about... 30% of its adult weight. What will the adult weight of Andre's puppy be? So again, this one's a little bit different because I, if I count by 30s, 30, 60, 90, 120, I want to find out what it is at 100%. If I count by 30s, it's not going to get there quite. So I'm going to find out what 10% of its weight is first. And then I can find out what 20% of its weight is. And that, and then I can count by the 10%. So I know 30 divided by 3 is 10%. So then I'm going to divide 9 by 3. And 9, by, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So now I can use this to get to the full weight. So 3 is 10%. 6 is 20% because now I'm counting just by 3s. 9 is 30%. Okay, so now I can just go 40%. 50%, 60%, 70, 24, 27, 30. So I know its full adult weight should be 30 pounds. So I can say 30 pounds should be the adult weight of this puppy. I guess no longer puppy, but this dog. Um, again, we can do the same problem using a table and we would set up the same information. We've got weight and we've got percent. Andre has a puppy that's 9 pounds, and this is 30% of its weight. I would find out if I want to get to 100%. First, I'm going to find out how much for 10%, which we did, which was 3 pounds. We divided it by 3. We divide by 3. So to find out what 100%, which is the full weight of the puppy, we times 10 by 10 to get 100. So I'm going to multiply 3 by 10. And 3 by 10 gives me 30, which is, again, our answer. So I'm going to put a star by it because we did it correctly both ways. So anytime you have a double number line, you can go back to a table. But both ways work. Okay, last one. What is the same about Jada's and Andre's puppies? What is different? So what is the same about them is that they both currently weigh the same, right? They both are 9 pounds right now. They both are 9 pounds. Both are... 9 pounds. What is different about them? Well, their full adult weight isn't the same. This one is going to be 45 pounds about when it's an adult. This one is going to be about 30 pounds when it's an adult. So they have, I'm going to say, different adult weights. Okay? So one's going to grow up to be a, maybe a larger size dog than the other. And the one that's going to be a larger sized dog is Jada's. And my work showed that. So write it down. And let's move on to activity number two. So activity number two, revisiting Jada's puppies. Now we're going to do the same type of thing. JD, Jada has a new puppy that weighs 9 pounds. We know this. It's about 20% of its adult weight. Here is a diagram. So this is called a tape diagram. I'm going to write this down. This is a tape 
diagram. So it's a way to show the same information we just saw. Um, the adult weight of the puppy will be 45 pounds. How can you see that in this diagram? So if we know nine is 20%, then we could know both of these together. All of these are 20%, right? 20%. 20%, 20%, okay? So if I know 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 equals 100%, then I could add up all these 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, which equals 45 pounds. So how can you see that in the diagram? I could see, oh, 9 times 5 is 45 pounds and 20% times five, because there's five of them, equals 100%. That's 100% of its weight is 45 pounds, and we see that on the diagram. So that's another way we can find the answer. Um, question B says, what fraction of its adult weight is the puppy now? So what fraction of its adult weight? How can you see that in the diagram? So what fraction of its adult weight? First, one way we can write a fraction. Anytime we have a percent, a percent is a number, over 100. So if we have 20%, then that 20% equals 20 over 100, which we could simplify to be, we could divide by 10 and be 2 over 10, because we divide divided the top by 10 and the bottom by 10, which we could also simplify since we can divide them both by 2 still to be 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So one-fifth of its adult weight. One-fifth, one out of five. Because at 20% is 20 over 100, which equals two-tenths, which equals one-fifth. So there's, those are all different ways. And also I can see this here because it's one out of my five ninths. One out of five. Okay, number two. Jada's friend has a dog that weighs 90 pounds. Here's a diagram Jada drew that represents the weight of her friend's dog and the weight of her puppy. How many times greater is the dog's weight than the puppy's? So again, let's read it again and make sure we understand. Jada's friend has a dog that weighs 90 pounds. So this one, there's 10 nines here. This is equaling 90 pounds. And this one is just equaling nine, right? And it says, how many times greater is the dog's weight than the puppy's? So I know. I have this and there's 10 of them, there's only one of them here. So one times 10 gives me that. Or nine times, nine times 10 would give me 90. So how many times greater? I'm gonna say 10 times greater. Because I take the nine and I multiply it by 10 to get 90, which is the adult one. Okay, Num letter B. <laughs> Compare the weight of the puppy and the dog using fractions. So we can say this a lot of different ways, but we could say, okay, this one is one. So one out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one tenth of the weight of the other one. So I'm going to say um, the puppy is like weighs one out of ten or one tenth the weight. of the dog. Oh, the dog, that's not a puppy, right? Because it's one out of 10. So make sure we pay attention to that one. One out of 10. It's one tenth. Compare the weight of the puppy and the dog using percentages. Okay, so if I'm thinking percentages and I have one tenth, if I'm doing a percent, a percent is a number compared to zero or number compared to 100. So I know 10 times 10 is 100, so that means I'm gonna multiply the top by 10. One times 10 is 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 one hundredths equals 10%. So I'm gonna say 10% the weight of the, the weight of the dog. Okay. So one-tenth is the same as 
which is the same as 10, oh, 10 hundredths and so on. Okay, moving on, make sure you write that down. Okay, activity number three, five dollars. We got a five dollar bill. Look at, there's an image right here if we forget. Noah has five dollars. Elena has 40% as much as Noah. How much does Elena have? So I'm going to do a table. Tables are our friends. We've got money and we've got percents. Okay, so if I say Noah has five dollars, five dollars on my table, five dollars is all of Noah's money. So five dollars is 100% of his money. He's not very rich, but he has something. Okay, and we're trying to see what is 40%. What is 40% of Noah's money? Because that's how much Elena has. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Um, one way we could do this is to, here's a Mrs. Young's trick, is to multiply diagonally. 40 times five divided by 100 will give me this answer. When I multiply diagonally and then divide, I can find any ratio. We'll talk about that in class if you don't know what that means, okay? Um, otherwise, I'm going to find another ratio to help me get to 40 because I know to get to 40, I need to find easier numbers to multiply or divide by. So I'm going to start by finding 20%. Oh, actually, no, 10%, sorry. <laughs> 10%. So I know 100 divided by 10 is 10%. So I'm going to divide 5 by 10. And you remember when we divide by 10, we just move the decimal to the left one time. So I have 0.5, and 0.5 in money terms would be $0.50. So I know 10% is 50 cents. So then I'm going to multiply that by 4 to get to 40%, because that is the question for 40%. 10 times 4 is 40%. So I'm going to multiply 50 cents by 4. You could think about this in your mind, or you can do the math. 50 cents, then that would be 100 cents, 150 cents. 200 cents, which is $2. So $2. So that means Elena only has $2. So maybe she can get like a candy bar or something. Not much. B, it says compare Elena and Noah's money using fractions. So draw a diagram to illustrate. Um, so she has 40% as much. So let's change 40% into a fraction. Percent, so 40%, percent means a number compared to 100. So 40 over 100. So we could say she has 40 one hundredths as much as Noah, which is equal to 4 tenths, because I'm dividing by 10, which is equal to, if I divide by 2 to simplify it, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 10 divided by 2 is 5, which equals 2 fifths as much as um Noah. So she has two fifths as much as Noah, she, or she has 40% as much as Noah. All of them would be the same. So two fifths as much. Okay, question 2A. Diego has 150% as much as Noah. So again, I'm going to use this table. It's the same ratio of 5 to 100. And now I'm trying to get to see what is 150%. Okay, a couple ways to do this. I know I already have this one, which, which is 10%. So I'm going to use this one. Okay, how many 10s are in 150? 10 times what is 150? Okay, I know 10 times 15 is 150. So I'm going to multiply 50 cents by 15. Okay, so let's do it. Um, 15 times, I'm going to write 0 0.50. There are two numbers after my decimal place, so I get to erase the decimal and multiply. So 0 times 5, 0 times 1, okay. Next one I add a 0, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. So I add them up and I get 750. And I know for 50 cents there were two numbers after the decimal place, so I'm moving it 1, 2 times, placing my decimal. So that means Diego has $7.50. There's other ways to reason through it, but a table always works. Um, again, compare Diego's and Noah's money using fractions. So if I'm saying 150%, 150% 
percents is a number compared to 100. So 150 over 100, which we could simplify if I divide them by 10. Then I take away those zeros and I get 15 pence. Okay, and then I could divide them both by 5, because these both are divisible by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So all of these fractions are fractions we could use, but I'm just simplifying it to get the most simplified fraction. 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over. So I could say it's 1 and a half times as much, or 3 halves times as much, or 15 tenths times as much, or 150 times as much, times as much. Okay. So make sure you write it down. Ask questions if you need it. Um, now I would like you to do the cool down, pause it and try it on your own, and then check the video if you get stuck. Please pause it and try to do it on your own first, okay? That's the goal. So it says a large bottle of juice contains 500 milliliters of juice. Um, so this is for a large one. A medium bottle contains 70% as much juice as the large bottle. How many milliliters of juice are in the medium bottle? So the large bottle of juice, so the bigger bottle of juice, is 500 milliliters. So I can say 100% of the juice is 500, okay? And I'm trying to see what is 70%, what is 70% as much? So I'm going to count by 10% here, 10, 20, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, and then we have 100%. So the full bottle of juice is 100. I'm trying to see what would go right here, and that's going to be my answer for the medium bottle, okay? This is what I'm trying to find. So I know I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 tick marks to get to 500. So I have to think, okay, 100 divided by what is 10? 100 divided by 10 is 10. So I'm going to divide 500 by 10. Remember, when we divide by 10, we just move the decimal to the left one time. So each one is counting by 50s. 500 divided by 10 is 50. Okay, so let's count by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. So that means the medium bottle of juice, I don't even have to keep going, is 350 milliliters. So this, this medium guy. Okay, so double number lines are great. You can also use a table to answer these. Um, make sure you check your answer and that you got this and then raise your hand, show me, and you can put your paper back in the basket and start on practice problems.